Now, the BBC News at six with George Alagaya. The Chancellor makes a U-turn on his budget plan to raise national insurance contributions. What a difference a week makes. Philip Hammond was all smiles then. Today, the PM was picking up the pieces. We will bring forward further proposals, but we will not bring forward increases to NIPs later in this Parliament. The climb down follows a backlash from Tory and opposition MPs alike. We have a government U-turn, we have no apology, and we have a budget that falls most heavily that falls most heavily on those with the least broad shoulders. My goodness, isn't it welcome that the Prime Minister today has admitted she is for turning with her screeching, embarrassing U-turn on national yeah. issues? We'll be asking how the Chancellor will make up the shortfall in his spending plans, also tonight. The wife who never gave up. Relief after the former Royal Marine Alexander Blackman's murder conviction for killing a wounded Taliban fighter is to man. Good evening and welcome to the BBC's News at Six. The Chancellor, Philip Hammond, has been forced into a U-turn over last week's budget plan to increase national insurance contributions for some self-employed people. It follows a backlash both inside and outside Parliament. Several Tory backbenchers had joined in the criticism, leaving Mr Hammond and Theresa May under fire for breaking a manifesto pledge. Today, Labour called it a humiliating climb-down. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. If number 11 is your front door, changing your mind about what's in the box is a very big deal. Shifting only a week after your Kodak moment, embarrassing indeed. Your Treasury colleagues, seven days later, Mr. keeping Dog, Sturm. Mr. Dog, does this represent a U-turn by the government? Excuse me. Was the Chancellor wrong? Worse Is still, when it's your boss who makes the announcement at the biggest political event of the week. Questions to the Prime Minister. The trend towards greater self-employment does create a structural issue in the tax base. We will bring forward further proposals, but we will not bring forward increases to NICs later in this Parliament. Tax hikes for two million self-employed people suddenly completely off. We've just heard the Prime Minister is about to drop the national insurance hike announced only a week ago. It seems to me like a government in a bit of chaos in here. The PM and her next door neighbour hardly looked too concerned. A budget, a budget that unravels in seven days. But the idea would have broken a Tory manifesto promise and they were then lambasted for a total change of heart. Does she agree that government should stick to their manifesto promises? Uh, and if so, uh, uh, she cannot object to the First Minister sticking to hers. Yeah. Is that why they want to abolish spring budgets? Because they just keep ripping them up? Yeah. Number 11 and number 10 only made the decision at 8am this morning, choosing humiliation today. How humiliating is this tax U-turn for the Chancellor? Then ask the Chancellor over a row that could have run for months. Can the Chancellor stay in post? The man himself, charged with managing the nation's accounts, had to explain how his careful spreadsheet calculations failed the political test. This government sets great store in the faith and trust of the British people, especially as we embark on the process of negotiating our exit from the European Union. By making this change today, we are listening to our colleagues and demonstrating our determination to fulfil both the letter and the spirit of our manifesto tax commitments. Number 11 had defended the idea. Number 10 had done too. But the atmosphere soured over the weekend. Sources suggest on Monday, a group of senior MPs told Theresa May the idea wouldn't wash. So today, in a move one former minister branded as extraordinary, Suddenly, the plan was gone. 
We made it very clear that we was not something we were going to support. We campaign against it. We vote against it. Um, they listened to us. So I think it's shown in some ways he's a strong chancellor in the sense of he's admitted he's made a mistake and he's done the U-turn. So I'm delighted. The ground hadn't been that well prepared. The mathematics didn't add up in terms of getting the votes for the legislation that would have been needed. So what we've got is a delay and I suspect some, some hard thinking about what the best way forward is, but we will have to tackle the problem. He doesn't look that bothered, strolling in the sun on his way back to his political home. But chancellors have to be trusted. Humiliated today, Chancellor. Reputations round here are hard won and easy to lose. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. Well, the scrapping of the rise in national insurance contributions leaves a big hole in the Chancellor's budget plans for the next few years. Mr Hammond has already pledged to increase spending on social care. So where does today's U-turn leave the public finances? Here's our economics editor, Kamal Ahmed. It was a tax rise and a gift to the headline writers. The Chancellor knew he had a problem when he sat down to breakfast the day after the budget, faced with an avalanche of negative publicity. He was trying to tackle this issue, the new world of work and the growth in the number of self-employed who are taxed less than employees. Many supported the increase in national insurance contributions and expressed their disappointment that today politics seems to have trumped economics. This is a disappointing move that the uh, increase in Class 4 national insurance won't be going ahead because that increase closed some of the discrepancies between employees and the self-employed in our tax system and it largely hit the better off self-employed with uh, the lowest earning self-employed not losing at all. This was Philip Hammond's rather neat budget plan a week ago. He made three big spending commitments. More money on social care, £2.4 billion. Pounds and more money for business rate relief and education. That came in at about £1.4 billion. It was claimed that those costs would be balanced by two big tax rises. A £2.6 billion tax rise on dividends from shares people own as an investment and, the controversial one, a £2 billion increase in national insurance contributions from the self-employed. That has now been scrapped leaving Mr Hammond with a government finances headache. Good morning. Hi. The big promise at the last election. This government would not raise direct taxes, so limiting its room for manoeuvre. A problem summed up in a tweet this afternoon by the government's own employment adviser, Matthew Taylor. Let's hope big political learning from the national insurance episode is the danger of making blanket manifesto tax pledges to try to embarrass opponents. Many others agree. It was never sensible to put in a manifesto a pledge that you wouldn't increase rates of national insurance or income tax or VAT. Those are the three biggest taxes that we have by far. To tie your hands for five years for those three big taxes never looked like a sensible thing to do. He's not the first and he won't be the last Chancellor to see a budget unravel over failures to see political elephant traps ahead. Mr Hammond has said he will fill the £2 billion black hole caused by today's U-turn at the next budget in the autumn. It is, for the moment, completely unclear how. Kamal Ahmed, BBC News. And Laura is in Downing Street for us. Laura, just how damaging is this, not just for the Chancellor, but for the Prime Minister herself? Well, George, it doesn't exactly smack of competence in government or indeed peace and harmony here in Downing Street, does it? And the interesting thing, one of the difficult things, I think, for Theresa May and Philip Hammond is inside the Conservative Party, there isn't even an agreement over whether this was a good thing to do to drop these plans. One senior Tory told me today it had been madness in the first place to introduce this idea. But on the other side, one senior MP told me they were livid that the government had dropped this because it creates an impression that they can be pushed around by relatively small groups of people who are objecting. I think in the whole, though, when it comes to a policy that a government puts out there, 
and frankly it looks like it's not going to fly, they have two choices. Do they let it drag on for months and months, causing political damage day after day? Or do they rip the plaster off, get the pain out of the way quickly? And I think here in Downing Street, that is clearly what they have decided to do. But no question about it, particularly for a chancellor whose job, perhaps above all else, is to be trusted, to be a safe pair of hands. This has not been a good day at the office and it won't be forgotten very fast. Laura, thank you. A former Royal Marine who shot dead an injured Taliban fighter while serving in Afghanistan has won his appeal against a conviction for murder. Sergeant Alexander Blackman had had it quashed by five judges in London who replaced it with man.